everybody. Thanks for joining Julian and I today for a session on Express Contracts. Many of you are customers of the solution. Many of you have heard about the solution. Some of you haven't heard about the solution. So we're hoping to, you know, just raise awareness and transparency uh, of the of the product that we have, um, and hopefully build some some excitement around it. Just take a few minutes uh, of the studio. There won't be any tests. Okay. So, and then we'll end this part of the session, which is not the most exciting part. We'll play a nice video. Is your airline looking for ways to make it easier to manage your private programs and get them to market faster? Express Contracts, built in partnership with Valara, simplifies and streamlines your contract management process. Reducing your reliance on disparate resources across your organization. Your sales team works hard, investing significant time and effort negotiating deals. They want to see the fares and market as quickly as possible, and your customers do too. By embracing the power of automation, your sales team can begin going from signed contracts to booking fares in a matter of hours, creating a competitive advantage for your airline. Consistent, repeatable processes and a user friendly dashboard give your sales team increased control and visibility. They can view contract status and let customers know when the fans will be available in the market, improving relationships and driving more sales. Whether or not you are currently using CMS such as Fizz or Salesforce, AT Pico offers a variety of integration options for express contracts that are scalable to meet the needs of any airline. Our experts will work with you to design an implementation strategy in line with your goals and priorities. If your airline is ready to take the next step in achieving your automation goals, speak to an ATPCO representative today. So, um, this is really a story about automation. So you've been hearing in the conference, there's a lot of innovative changes going on in the marketplace. A lot of the tools and products that we you know are, are geared around automation to actually enable innovation. So um, I'll give you a little bit of context about it. And Julian's joining us to really uh, tell, tell um, his story um, of the Southwest business. Uh, so um, how many in here are, how many airlines in here are in the sales role? In sales is kind of. Ish, ish, ish. <laughs> sales operation, IT efficiency roles. Anybody? Not very. Okay. Um, and, and then, a, of course, pricing and implementation roles is probably the majority here. But what I just want to say about that is that everybody, you know, all of those different areas of the organization all have a common goal: is to get fares into the market, selling selling quickly and, and accurately as well. So, you know, um, a lot of times when we're when we're talking about the product, we, we tend to involve the three stakeholder groups that I, I was <laughs> speaking to. Um, that's just for some, some broad context around it. So we saw some trends happening, um, you know, during the, the pandemic. Um, and, you know, they're all leading to um, express contract being of, of higher value than it was probably before the pandemic. But you know, these are stats that we compiled from various sources. But you know, there was a lot of um, impact to the workforce in these airlines. And, um, a lot of people, you know, retired. Um, you know, all, all types of reasons moved around, shuffled within the organization. Everybody was doing more with less, lean. Um, but a lot of this um, would, you know, a lot of this is subject matter expertise. You know, that that may be out. And so as you know. Corporate contracts are some of the most complex um, uh, designs within the ATP Go systems. Um, you know, those are the most some of the most robust uh, rule restriction categories are are kind of baked into that that solution. So you had workforces leaving, work the work the workforce was diminishing. Uh, ATP Go during the pandemic, surprisingly, we saw a record number of fare activity through the roof. We had 410 million fare changes in March alone. So um, that just speaks a lot to, you know, networks were changing, 
Um, everybody was trying to figure it out. There was a lot of a, a lot of activity was happening during the pandemic. So you've got kind of subject matter expertise dropping. You've got fair volatility raising, and then um, GBTA uh, shared uh, yesterday. You know, it's all coming back. So um, travel demand is is starting to spike. You know, this is all really taking off. So um, you know, there's an expectation of, a, of already seeing, I suppose, thirty. 3.8 percent increase uh, year over year just this year alone, and it's it's really going to continue to just accelerate and take off. So this is just giving you a little bit of, of context um, for driving towards the solution. This was a, an idea I tried. I was, was going to go down the whole magic eight ball route. I wasn't, you know, didn't pass the, the, the some of the marketing tests. But everybody know where magic eight ball is. I don't know if I'm dating myself, but you know, it's, a, it's a thing that looks like a giant eight ball. You, you shake it, you ask it a question, and it comes up with an answer. So you're going to see some of the answers in that globe over on the right. The little looks like it isn't something I would say, but you know, that's not a all. But you know, what if? So given all that, that kind of um, subject matter expertise, you know, corporate travel coming back, their volatility, um, you know. You know, what if what if you could have a touchless automated end-to-end -end workflow? Touchless meaning from even a customer sales portal all the way out to the market without without any interaction uh, from humans. And of course, it's, I'm going to use the positive ones. I didn't like put any of the negative ones up here. Um, what if you could take all 100 percent of your private fare program coverage and put it through the solution? So it's not really just about corporate. Contracts, it could be leisure, it could be private programs, tactical. Um, and the signs point to yes on that, of course. What if you could remove all the bottlenecks um, and backlogs? So, you know, sales is getting contracts, deals done, you know, it, it, it's going through a kind of an intermediate processes that, that Julian will talk about, um, and then it gets put on the desks of the pricing team. Um, you know, sometimes it's not in every case, but sometimes you will hit backlogs and bottlenecks, and that just means that those fares aren't in the, uh, selling in the market. That's without a doubt about that. Um, your SMEs, if, if you could automate a lot of the workflows and you could streamline all of this, and I think every airline is doing this, either in-house or, or through other solutions, trying to trying to make this all kind of automated to free up the, the subject matter expertise to actually be, be more innovative and strategic thinking. So this is, and, and you can tell in the conference, with all the change that's happening in the world and the airlines are changing rapidly, you know, this is a good thing. And then also there's a benefit in predictable uh, revenue forecasting. So you know when the deal's done, you know when the, when the fares are in the market selling, it, it, it's happening very quickly and that can help you with revenue Revenue uh, forecasting. Okay, so this is all happening now. These aren't really what ifs. This is actually uh, yeah, we're doing this today. Uh, in two thousand in twenty twenty two, we processed um, over seventy percent of the express contracts submissions in under thirty minutes, and ninety percent of those were completed in uh, two hours. Um, So I'm going to talk a little bit about workflow, and I'm going to get it, hand it over to Julian, um, and we're just going to leave this up here just to give context. Um, but this is the current workflow. It's very typical. I'm sure it's going to resonate with, with a lot of folks. But the um, you may have a customer or sales portal. This this is some of the innovative work that United Airlines is in the news doing now with um, self service is really this pocket here. Um, you and, and a lot of the innovations happening in this area. Of, um, you could go right to a sales rep and turn that information into a contract management system, which is very, very common. Um, the contract management system has an output to uh, direct, I call it direct sales, it's sales operations, it's uh, sales efficiency, sales excellence, it has a million, a million different things in there, but that direct sales is really the bridge between the contract management system and the pricing team. Um, and then, it, of course, the pricing team puts in the system and it gets packaged and distributed by ATP Co. and then it gets out into the market as bookable fares. But what is really tends to happen is there might be a lot of you can see these arrows in the questions, you know, uh, this is what we meant, 
um, you know, this is translating, think of a, in the days of paper contracts, it was a paper contract, you've got to translate that into the ATP or data structures. And so you get a lot of, uh, you know, um, lost in translation, I'll say, uh, between that. This, this, these teams don't know tariffs, tables, sequences, cat, cats, all the cats that we, and I promise there's not a slide with all the cats. <laughs> um, all the category restrictions that we have, you know, and, and the pricing team, you know, has to, uh, you know, understand what, what was meant in the deal and just make sure that's happening. So I just see this as kind of circular and then even bookable fares in the market, you know, it could be, you know, the customer may say this doesn't look right. You know, there might be something wrong. Those questions can come back to the pricing team or back to the sales rep. So what we're going to focus on with express contracts is those shaded areas. So it's it's taking output from the uh, contract management system. It's uh, you know we have multiple ways in the product to in to, to integrate and automate this. Um, it can be a manual Excel sheet that you have automation to populate, or it, or it can be APIs. Um, connected directly to the output of the, of the um, Salesforce or Prism or the, the contract. So does all that sound sound right? <coughs> so I'm asking the very questions up there. Is this right? <laughs> um, so it's good. So Julian is um, is joining us today. Uh, Southwest Business and Southwest Airlines is a recent um, customer of uh, uh, Express Contracts and. Um, you know, uh, there's been some news out there. Uh, United's been in the news with Express Contracts, Gold. You know, I could go down down the list, but um, we're seeing a lot of success and a lot of a lot of interest um, in the product. But I want Julian to tell it from from you know tell the story in your voice. Um, you know what? Maybe just introduce yourself and then tell us like what you, what got you on this path to automation in the corporates. Hello everyone, my name is Julian Azam. I'm currently a senior manager of Southwest Business, uh, where I will be CEO of sales operations and products. Uh, and in Southwest Airlines, we are uh, known to be the love airline. So I'm going to start with a little bit of fun and then end a little bit of love. So for the fun of the room, does anything we're talking about automation? Does anybody know what a baby computer calls its phone? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I will transition into uh, the, the partnership that we've had with with Doug and Team. Um, we, uh, you heard Sue Dan yesterday from GBTA talk about uh, going back into pre-pandemic levels of corporate travel, um, and we have a lot of contracts that our sales folks are um, implementing every day that go to our pricing team. We saw a lot of uh, sometimes friction and inefficiencies and the, the manual data entry that our sales folks were putting in a contract management system and how it would flow into uh, ATP Corporate Manager. So we were uh, looking for ways, for creative ways to build an API or a marketplace. And that's when the Douglas team um, from ATP Corps said that there's a, a tool called ATP Express Contracts that does just that. It, it hooks between your contract management system in two pair manager. Um, there's a couple of ways which we're going to talk about uh, the, the format in which that's sent. Uh, but basically what it does is it removes <coughs> the manual data entry from uh, the contract management system to the pricing team to pair manager and it integrates it uh, completely with, from directly from whether you use Prism or Salesforce, we use Salesforce to go from Salesforce into uh, pair manager. Uh, so you see here, um, you know, we, we also just launched a portal as well called Southwest Business Assist uh, because self-service automation, you know, that's, that is the future. And uh, a lot of our customers already have access to, to our portal where they are just looking at their contracts, they're seeing what's available, they're requesting contracts, there's a lot of meetings, a lot of groups uh, being held right now. And so that information is going to our sales reps. The sales reps are entering that into a contract, uh, and that contract, as soon as they enter that into a uh, what we call a, a business case or a contract, it automatically uh, sends a API call into ATP Go Fair Manager using Express Contracts. Uh, I think uh, one of the great things that we've been able to do is uh, ATP Go Express Contracts offers a cool environment so you can do a concept and test, test this, and then 
uh, that was one of our uh, kind of success stories going into it. Uh, but what we found is that that removes that, that friction point, it uh, increases efficiency, and it also allows for a faster go to market verify it. It's not ultimately what our customers want is that faster go to speed, uh, go to market speed, as well as putting the contracts to use and sending the travelers out to, to travel. So hopefully it's a helpful overview of, of how we use the question. And did you see an alignment of the stars between the different business areas? So we did. We have uh, we have a lot of workshops. I have my friends in the room here from our management and from technology. We have a lot of workshops with with architecture, with revenue management to make sure that this met our, our standards for architecture, for software security, and of course our business stakeholders well grounded. We're we're very excited about the the speed to the faster, you know, speed to market. Um, so we can see that. And um, so the, the solution does have multiple aspects to it. You can, it's very flexible. You can even run two parallel implementations if you wanted to use the Excel standard instruction form for part of the part of it, and, and, and the API for the other part. And so it's, it, it has those different solutions. But I'm just curious, what led you down the API road? Yes, versus the standard instruction. We were using a form of the Excel um, that we had in house built, um, which was the manual way to put the uh, you know, value of data. Um, and you know, the API just met our standards from an architecture standpoint, um, and it also sets us up for success for the future. You know, you hear things about machine learning, artificial intelligence. So the API was the, the what sets us up for success to get that full and end automation. And um, did it did, when you when you started implementing express contracts? Did it leapfrog or accelerate um, plans you already had for solving that same Yeah, issue? yeah. Whenever we uh, we were looking at a solution, we were trying to see what we can build. If we were working with other developers, and since you guys have kind of an off the shelf product that we can leverage, it definitely accelerated that development. And if we can just configure the the API connection between. Express contracts in our contract management system, uh, and it definitely puts us forward into to that solution. And any hurdles that you encounter, challenges, and how did you overcome them? Yeah, we've had we've had some hurdles. You know, with automation comes some hurdles. Uh, I think change management was our biggest hurdle. Our pricing team was doing things um, uh, for years and years. Our sales team was used to doing things for years and years. Um, so change management is definitely uh, a hurdle, but I think the way you overcome that hurdle is you have a, um, a good change management process in place, you have a good release management uh, schedule, you um, involve all stakeholders, you communicate uh, as much as possible to all the, the different things that are changing because we did change uh, you know, the, the, the way things were working for a long time. Um, so I definitely think change management is part of it. Um, and is there a next level? So, you, so you're in your initial phase of, of your uh, implementation of it now, but are you already envisioning the next level? Um, yes, definitely. I think our next level is, like I said, full and end automation. Uh, so currently we have a one-way integration between our CMS and our uh, and Express contracts and, and uh, fair manager. We definitely want a full bi-directional integration where if something was filed, we get a response back. It updates the contract real time. So if somebody in the portal requested a contract, they can see that uh, in the portal. Um, and then, like I said, you know, we hear a lot about dynamic offers and, and have the future there. So we definitely want to be set up for success there. Um, and I think the future is right when we talk about automation. And last question, I suppose, the interview question: uh, Is there any? Do you have any advice for anyone uh, considering uh, the product? Yes, I think definitely. And you heard Alex talk about it: um, proof of concept. You know, like I said, you guys offer the built environment. You can test and see if this meets your needs. Uh, we tested a lot, people testing, different things. So, you know, do a proof of concept. Make sure that this fits your need, um, because that was very helpful for us. Yeah. And how many people in the room? Have not heard of Express. And is anybody unaware? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
you need to express what you're doing. I do. Usually I need to stay down. Sure. So I'm sure there's a and I have a couple of questions. One, how long is this journey? Like from beginning to end, how long do you think you guys actually upload your first time? You're at all say we're still in the journey. So uh, well, yeah, it's um, and I think we can get our relationship I want to say a year ago. Um and there was all like so there was a lot of workshops and I wanna say we dedicated about a few months, you know, mm-hmm. three, four months to uh, workshops and you know, back and forth, uh, integration. So that's okay. Mm-hmm. 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 And my second question is, <coughs> what type of contracts are you actually following through with this kind of Are they very simple? Or are they linear? Or good question. We um, we actually want to make all types of contracts from simple to complex. So uh, we started with our basic transient travel contracts. We um, now are incorporating meetings contracts, you know, pre approved offers. Like that nature. So we're, we're building a solution to the alternative contract. Okay. Okay. And I think um, it's highly unlikely that anybody just jump into a fully automated, you know, it's not somewhere you jump to. You have to trust the automation, trust the burn, you know, so, um, you know, I think uh, what, we, what we tend to see is that you'll implement the solution, but you'll want some kind of stopgap measure down the um, pricing team or, or the packaging distribution of course not so you can review review the data make sure the content's there and then it, it requires a manual release in that workflow but over time you know we, we are seeing the, the touch this workflow now um, okay, and then so you know <coughs> this is the most technical slide we'll throw up on the on the on the so I know it's after lunch get too technical, but you know, an optimized workflow, you know, you, again, you've got your, this is a deeper dive into the, the shaded areas in the prior slide, you know, you've got your uh, contract management system, you've got a lot of um, integration opportunities in here, um, Valaro, our partners at Valaro, up here in the second row, um, are very good at, at these kind of integrations, um, very, very uh, efficient at doing that. Um, airlines as well could take this on themselves. We have a dedicated team at ATPCO that helps everybody um, integrate and implement. We yeah, spent a lot of time. We have a big shout out to the Valaro team as well as Swabi, Joy, Brendan. I mean, they've been kind of side by side with us helping us through the implementation process. Yeah. Um, so we've got a shout out there for the team. a huge support network in implementing this. <laughs> they could go to the standard instruction um, uh, or you can use the uh, data, the data interface, the API um, that can be loaded into Express Contracts. There's, of course, a, a dashboard for you to see the, the work, the units of work, and how they're processing. And it has counters in there, and it's got some, some kind of error handling as you would expect a dashboard to have. And then, if all is good, it can go right to the ATP Code Fair Manager and be released to the market. The time to get released is about $2 from the average to the Express Contracts you read where. Pricing team can go out and you can see a, about two hour scan for it. Dave Harvey at mm-hmm. Southwest Airlines gave a great uh, slogan in, in the press release. He called it Same Day Fairs. <laughs> Makes you think of a dry cleaner or something. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, a good, it's a good term. So, any any questions on the workflows or the, the benefits or any questions on the support? I have a question. What kind of um, efficiency can you talk about the efficiency that you can you talk about the efficiency that you've seen so far? I understand you're still on the journey, but is there have you been able to have kind of data around the improvement that you've seen? Yeah, definitely. So when you think about the efficiency that's gained from going from manual to automated, um, and we're, we're working through this right now with where you can see and put KPIs to the automated numbers that are coming through. So 
here, we have a contract that was sent via the contract management system to the key code express. We're able to quantify that, see where things went wrong, and then fix it uh, rather than if something was manual or just more time to do it. So I think that, that's really the efficiency that we're seeing right now. So again, yeah, we're still on the journey, we're still working through it, but uh, we're able to quantify what the automation and the numbers are coming through to, to make this <coughs> Shell, there, there may be some ways to quantify the, the accuracy part of it and the, see, see debit memos going down and things like that through filing you know, inaccuracies. There's, there's ways to measure the, the, the benefits of it. I don't know how you would love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was just wondering if uh, any categories can be. Uh, I'm super shy now. <laughs> Can all the categories be uh, loaded through the start contract? I don't think it's spotted here. I don't think it's 100% of them, but it's the majority. It's, it does. The categories that you would require for coding your um, pair of programs are being supported. Um, there are um, other means of supporting any uh, categories that are not directly uh, supported. So <clears throat> the overline messages, yes, can support coding. <laughs> Can changes be uh, processed through that the system? Yes, we have some time for that. So it could be new, brand new contracts, it could be changes to existing contracts, or rules, terms and conditions. You know, it's a but I, I, I would say the majority of categories are in corporate fields, uh, I would imagine. They are. Yeah, we have a lot of updates to contracts. It's not just brand new contracts. It's if we add a distribution uh, channel, if we add you know, different things to the contract, but it's not just brand new contracts, it's also updates to the contract. It's also the contract. And I would say every customer that we onboard, we learn a few new ways because you know there's a lot of ways to achieve the, the same result using AT care systems. Um, so we learn a little bit more from each of and the, and the, the product um, evolves with those changes. So there's a lot of general rule navigation that happens within the, the, the pair structures, as you know, for, for example. Um, so if, if we find there's customer needs along the journey and, and it, it's, it's playing into us implementing it, you know, the, the OR team's really great. They have, they have startup moxie and they're, they're very reactive. And the solutions are, are evolving. <laughs> and it's good for the community as we you know, enable more. When you go to Scottish Arts, it's too. It's good. Yeah, that's what we have. Yes. Do you have a demo, a dashboard? Did you see something about it? I didn't put any screenshots of it in here, but um, you know, we're happy to reach out and we're happy to work with you directly. And, um, not sure if in the solution the alley we're doing any kind of express contracts demos. We can set that up. Set. Yeah, we can set that up for you. Thank you, Eric. Hey, a question for you, Doug. Um, where, where's ADP go at just in terms of adoption from carriers? How many folks do you have using this outside of just like POCs? Like we're talking, where will we on POC at this point? Yeah, but right. how many airlines do you have kind of in the tank? How many of those folks are you say are using this as an everyday solution? Yeah, we have about I want to say around sixteen airlines, roughly of different shapes and sizes, and around the globe using it. Um, we have a lot in the pipeline that are really through the you know we have we have to do a lot of proof of concept. We we take we first ask for examples of your contract. We have to look at your data structures. We have to run it through our test system, see if there's any red flags there. There's usually not, but a lot of that, there's a lot of upfront um, proof of, I, I would just call it proof of concept before we go to commercial agreements and things like that. So, so it is a little bit of a long, longer sales cycle just, just for that reason. And I guess, how do you guys look at, as you onboard more folks, like community releases versus like individual enhancements for specific airlines? Here, what's your thought there? Um, Swati's a lot closer to us than I am, but I, I think, like I said, if there's enhancements that are, 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 are low-hanging fruit, if you will, and Bolaro 
you know, they, they can get in and they're owning the software and the, the development shop for it. Unless it's a dashboard like the case. So the solution is a community-based solution. Any features and functionalities that we are uh, customers are looking for now, be it customers that we're onboarding or customers that are very actively using, they find they want to um, implement new programs and, and looking for other functionality. We're absolutely happy to work with the community and get those delivered. If you're looking for bespoke enhancements to your specific workflow, um, you may, you have the option of, uh, from a workflow perspective, you can do it in house or you can work with my folks over at Cloud as well. So, probably other options to do that. Thank you. Thanks for those questions. Does everybody know what this is? Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, it's getting it's making it. I think sometimes it just slaps and you don't So we're gonna we're gonna sort of do a kind of a you know really the slides about what's holding you back. So you know we uh, we know there's concerns out there. There's questions about the solution. Um, and Julian and I have kind of just play off these questions I just came up with about. But uh, what would you say if someone said, I don't trust automation? You know, automation does have pros and cons, uh, and so does manual data entry. But I think with automation, that's where the investment is, that's where the future is going to be. Um, and if you've heard it throughout this conference, that's what we're testing it. So um, but as much as I would say, you know, I trust automation, but I trust the yeah. And some of that trust just comes with change, right? And how adaptable the language is. Um, what would you say? That's really what this like should say. Uh, I would have to build APIs, and I don't have the resources to do that within my organization. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a small minority team for this, and we partner very closely with the directors um, of our products for uh, which are there to guide you through everything. So I would say you just need a small amount of time to do this. I would part of the price team, which would also small amount of time to go into the work. And an alternative is, uh, as I was saying earlier, well, well, our, this, this is right in the real house. To, to, you can outsource that integration work for a partner. You know, we'll be partners with it. So lots of opportunity there. Um, what would would you say if somebody said business process re-engineering is just too heavy a lift? And I'm not going to say it wasn't a lift. Yeah, there's a lift and there's a lift for investing in. Um, and so we have to kind of change. We think we'll go back to change management and the way we, we process these you know, contracts and loans. Um, so you have to be able to dedicate a little bit to that change management. Uh, but I'm totally worth it because you know, putting us through the factory. Um, I'll take this one. The solution is cost prohibitive. So this is um, more of a commercial discussion, but I can say that we don't, you know, we're not a commercial organization. We exist to lower the distribution cost of an airline, so it's not really a profit play for us, but we recently uh, changed the model, the pricing model, to, so that it's not punitive. You're not paying. Um, the price tag doesn't go up with more volume you push through. It's actually quite the opposite. The unit of work cost goes down with, with more volume as you, as you go through. So it's almost an incentive to get those economies to scale through, through pushing more volume through. Um, the price, I, I can tell you, it's it starts at maybe for the first 2,000 contracts, you know, because some of the cost, you know, that's the heavy lifting that we have to do. It's, it's ranges from $8 a contract, um, and it gets down as low as 26 cents in that price. Uh, I don't think it's reasonable. Yeah. And keep in mind, the unit of work is a carrier tariff rule. CTR. Yeah, you know those terms. They're not going to talk about billions of money all of them now. Um, that's the unit of work, but you can, technically you can have multiple corporates within a single group. So that unit of work actually it's not a direct map into the number of contracts. It just depends on how you manage it. Um, and then this is not, what, what would I say if somebody said this is not for, for an airline <coughs> on size, it's, it's like I'm not, and then I can come up with the expression, buying a sledgehammer. Oh, yeah. 
like an hour meal or something. I, I can't remember. <laughs> um, but um, I can tell you that it, it has benefited airlines from all, like I said, all sizes and models and some. And again, it's not really only about corporate contracts. It doesn't have to be that those workflows that we were showing you are the, the, the really was the main driver for the solution, but it can do a lot more. You can actually do all your um, security updates through it. Um, you know, there's just a, a, a plethora of, of, of solutions that you can put through the, through the automator tool. That was the last question. <laughs> So the takeaways, um, just, just to leave you with some takeaways unless there's another questions and, and uh, to, to the point on demos and things like that, you know, happy to happy to engage with you, reach out um, to your account rep. You know, we're happy to go through, we're happy to have the discussion, look at your your current workflows, look at your data structures, and, and help you in this area. Um, the takeaway, though, is there's definitely an amplified need and a need out there for automation of, of private programs, um, specifically uh, for all the reasons that we gave earlier in the presentation. Things are moving a lot faster. There's pockets of automation happening across all the different um, pieces of the organization as we as we. Um, you know, it goes across our energy management systems, fair management systems. You know, it's, it's just you can see what you can kind of feel what's happening out there. So there's definitely a drive for this uh, as the fair volatility will, I, I imagine, will continue to rise. Um, Express contracts is vastly different now from when it began. I think it, it, it did begin, it began as, a, as a good solution, um, but if you looked at it, Five years ago, you know, again, it's greatly evolved. We have new integration uh, methodologies that we can employ, and it, it's just we've added a lot more features than we had just, just a relatively short time ago. So if you if you if you saw it and you know you looked at it and you tested it even, you know, give it a second, give it a second. Um, and then lastly, it's um, a seamless, scalable, and touchless end-to-end -end workflows that enable same-day affairs. In the market are within your reach. So we've seen implementations uh, as short as three months to you know um, the more the more complex ones. If you're using API integrations and things like that, to, um, eight months to twelve months. I can't even put numbers to it. This one even all this. But uh, eight to twelve months. Okay, that's what we have something for. <laughs> So, and then lastly, just, you know, contact us if you're interested um, in, like I said, a deeper dive and evaluation. You know, we, we do pretty robust evaluations and then we run it through the system and we re-engage with you and then we can talk to you about um, that. Thank you.